real thing. If you want to stay informed, all right, about what's going on and up on, on a global and universal level, hit us up at at Shockley on our Twitter, all right? All right. Yeah, and my business is this with the music. When I go to the jails, I speak to dudes that's doing life. And I sat there with this one dude, and he said, I'm so thankful for hip hop. It wasn't there for my generation. I'm doing life, and it saved me. But it saved my younger brother and sisters. And I would say, I said, why? He said, just for what y'all were saying on your records, changed the whole mentality of the hood. Right now in hip hop, most of these young people think it's cool to name yourself after Scarface. It's cool to name yourself after Manuel Noriega. And I tell the little kids, look, first of all, these dudes are in our communities, probably selling drugs in the five block area of the community. Secondly, we created this hip hop so our kids didn't have to worship Scarface and John Gotti. And to prove that it's true, Biggie Smalls, Fat black dude from Brooklyn, New York, selling crap on his first record. He said this. It was all a dream. Salt and pepper. Heavy D up in the limousine. Mr. Magic Molly Mall. These kids in our communities, like you said, we gotta give them some more credit. The drug dealers don't want to sell a drug. They want to be successful. They want to be educated. And the only thing that our generation did, like White said, at 16, 17, 18, 19, and 21 years old, we didn't wait no, for nobody to do it for us. We did it ourselves. Hip hop is about no excuses. You come to hip hop and say, what should I do? And the thing hip hop says to you is, what can you do? If it's dance, if it's rapping, if it's writing, if it's poetry, if it's screenplay, whatever it is, in a creative presentation that can educate our people, young, old, and alike, that's what's going to break down the so-called generation gap. Because with hip hop now, and our generations from the day it started, when Melly Mel and Cool Herc started, and then when Run DMC, I said it on Adidas. We didn't create this, we took the beat from the street and put it on TV. We just opened up that lane, and through that lane came all the different rhyme styles, all the beats, Public Enemy, De La Soul. They asked Ice Cube, what was the greatest period in hip hop? And Ice Cube said it had to be the old school era, the golden age, and the guy on the radio was thinking from a materialistic commercial standpoint, because remember, Ice Cube was with NWA, although they were shocking and controversial, they made a lot of money. They sold records and they toured. Then Ice Cube left NWA, came to New York, and got with these dudes to make us a album called America's Most Wanted. And they said, yeah, Ice Cube, you just saying that because you was rolling and successful. No, Ice Cube said like this, he said no. Because you had Run DMC, Ice Cube, Saw and Pepper, MC Light, Big Daddy King, they are so, the Beastie Boys, um, Eric B and Rakim. He said we all were from the same corner, but we represented a, a mentality from our communities that need to be heard. Your clients, Prince. And he said, what is it, you know, what is it that y'all want to do? It was a bunch of us, we were on a movie set, and we were, we, everybody had something that they wanted to do. And everybody was looking to him to make it happen. Sometimes these settings are just to ignite the fire that exists in you. The leader that you are, to go back to your group of friends and say, you know what, they talked about this, that, and that, let's brainstorm. What can we do in our community? So it's great to look at us and say, we want more. What can we leave here with? But that's always not what you should expect, right? Because uh, I'm at Rev Yearwood. There's some young people that are dynamic, that are coming up on the scene, and again, it's about giving them the resources, the infrastructure, and not just pat on the back and say, get out there and be a, 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 a prop at, at, at a rally, but also trusting them, because one of the best of the movement is sometimes when you fail. I've learned more about being a leader or being in my position when I have failed, when I have lost, when I have gone home and said, I've messed up. But then I got the next day. Our young folks are not allowed to fail. They're not allowed to have the, the checkbook. They're not allowed to do what they need to do. So we got to have a real conversation. So when you hear this frustration, then we got to deal with that. They want to know, after you leave here, 
What are you doing in your community to get folks together? The email is hiphopallforum at gmail.com. That's H-I-P-H-O-P-A-L-C. <laughs>